This prison guard fell in love with this inmate and then they escaped together. 40-year-old Casey White had a 75-year sentence for attempted murder, robbery, and was awaiting a murder trial in Alabama. But throughout his time in jail, prison guard 56-year-old Vicky White had an ongoing two-year relationship with Casey. And not only were they secretly in a relationship, but they had been plotting how to escape together. At this point, Vicky was a supervisor and had worked at the jail for over 25 years, so everyone was shocked when they found out what she did. So on April 29th, 2022, Vicky managed to sneak out of the jail with Casey. She told the other guards that she was taking Casey for a mental health evaluation when she was seen taking him out of his cell, but that appointment didn't exist. Casey and Vicky were on the run for 11 days in total. And on May 9th, police finally found them and after a long car chase, Vicky took her own life. Investigators found 1,100 phone calls between them and realized that Casey made Vicky believe that he loved her and basically told her everything she wanted to hear. But when Casey was arrested again, he admitted that he had no real intentions with Vicky and that if they managed to escape, he was going to kill her. Here are five of the strangest animals that you probably didn't even know existed, part two. So in fifth place is the big old penis snake. Now experts don't really like calling it that for some reason, so the technical name for it is this. Only two of these creatures have ever been found, one in the Brazilian rainforest in the late 1800s, and then one in 2011 by engineers working on a hydroelectric dam project again in Brazil. In fourth place is the goblin shark, or sometimes called a living fossil, because it is the only surviving representative of the family Mitsukuranidae, a lineage 125 million years old. In third place is basically an alive thorn. The official name for the bug straight up sounds like a Harry Potter spell, Umbonoya spinosa. In second place, we have the blue glaucus, which somehow is a species of sea slug. And in first place has to be the creature of nightmares, the African hammer-headed bat. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like Satan's version of a dog. They inhabit Central African lowland rainforests, swamp forests, mangroves, grasslands, and hell. Now I have 10 more of these, so make sure you follow for tomorrow's part three. Police in Edna, Texas have reported that they are searching for a person and vehicle of interest related to the December 5th murder of 16-year-old Lisbeth Medina. On Tuesday, Lisbeth's mother Jacqueline found her unresponsive in their apartment after she hadn't shown up for a Christmas parade with her cheer squad. She was pronounced dead on the scene, and while her cause of death has not been released, it's been said she's a victim of capital murder. Very few details about the crime have been released, but today, Edna police released photos of a person and vehicle of interest in connection to the case. The person of interest is a male and is described by police as possibly having a tattoo behind his right ear. He is seen in the images wearing a black Volcom hooded sweatshirt and he was seen driving a silver Ford Taurus model year ranging from 2010 to 2018. The entire community in Edna, Texas is absolutely heartbroken over Elizabeth's murder. Like I said, not too many details have been released, but with the release of this image of the person of interest and his vehicle, police are asking for the public's help. If you know anything about Lisbeth's murder or anything about this person or vehicle, you can contact the numbers here. Please help spread awareness about this so we can help get justice for Lisbeth. Fast Food and Retail Horror Stories number 4 By the end of April 1997, Paul Reed was given the name The Fast Food Killer. In February of that year in Tennessee, he went to a Captain D's restaurant where he forced 16-year-old Sarah and 25-year-old Steve to go into a walk-in freezer and lay down. He as hot them execution style and stole money out of the register to put a down payment on his new car. A month later, he stopped at a McDonald's right after they closed. When the four employees walked out the back door to end their shift, he held a gun forcing them to go back into the restaurant. In the middle of the dining room, he unalived three out of the four workers with a gun, and when he tried to eshot the fourth worker, Jose, his gun malfunctioned. He then slabbed Jose 17 times, though Jose miraculously survived. A month later, still free, he went to a Baskin Robbins where he kidnapped two of the employees, drove them to Dunbar State Park, and cut their throats, unaliving both of them. Finally, he was arrested and received seven consecutive death sentences and passed away in 2013. 
This YouTuber was murdered by her own father in an honor killing. Tiba Al Ali was originally from Iraq but moved to Turkey in 2017 at the age of 17 and has lived there for the past six years with her boyfriend. While she lived in Turkey, she began a YouTube channel and blogged her life and managed to gain around 34,000 subscribers. But even though Tiba seemed to love her new life, her father back in Iraq was not too happy with her decision to leave and not come back. And on January 2023, she went back to Iraq to attend an event and see some of her family. But while she was there, her father kidnapped her, drugged her, and then strangled her in her sleep. He later said that he did this to wash away the shame she had brought to the family. He eventually turned himself in, but apparently he won't be serving much time in prison. And this is because the penal code in Iraq allows judges to impose lenient sentences on people who kill for honorable motives. Another very disturbing case coming out of Colorado, guys. This Colorado ICU nurse was just sentenced to over 20 years in prison for SAing unconscious patients under his care. This is 61 year old Christopher Lambros, and he was an ICU nurse at the St. Mary's Hospital in Grand Junction, Colorado. He was arrested back in October of 2022, but the sentencing just happened. On July 9th of 2022, Christopher was caught in the act by another nurse at the hospital. The nurse immediately reported what they saw to the supervisors. The nurse saw him taking a selfie with an unconscious patient and he actually pulled up the patient's gown and was exposing her genitals. The witness said that when he was caught, he immediately dropped his phone and then acted like he was doing something with the medical equipment and left the room. What police found on his phone is disturbing. There was multiple pictures and videos of him with patients in one of the videos, he was actually sucking on one of the patient's nipples. He referred to his collection as his Dexter collection. In the videos removed from his phone, he could be heard saying things such as, don't ever get rid of these videos, you need to keep them forever, and this is your Dexter collection. During court, the judge found out some of the victims he essayed actually ended up passing away. The judge said the idea of these women being molested as they took their last breath is haunting to the court. Personally, I don't think 20 years is long enough. The BBC are reporting today that a giant hole bigger than 60 Earths has appeared in the sun. Now before you start typing hole in the sun before GTA 6, it's not a goddamn hole. The real reason it looks like one is because this dark area is cooler than the rest of the sun, which when viewed on ultraviolet and x-ray images makes it appear darker. But if you looked at it with your naked eye, you wouldn't even be able to see it. So we can chill out because it is not the end for us yet. This is the harrowing case of the deceased baby that was posted in the mail. It was the 11th of May 1965 in Darwin, Australia. A postal worker named John Polishuk was expecting a normal day at work. Little did he know what he was about to find would haunt him for the rest of his days. An unclaimed parcel sat in the office and this was not uncommon. However, this particular parcel had been sat there for eight days and something unnerving had started to happen. It had begun to smell quite bad and liquid was seeping out of it. John decided to investigate and was horrified by what he found. Inside the package was a deceased newborn baby. Part of the child's umbilical cord was still attached. In a complete panic, John rang the police. An investigation began, but unfortunately it was frustratingly unproductive. Now the package had come from Melbourne to Darwin. It was documented that a J.F. Barnes at 2 Woolridge Avenue, Mentone, Victoria had posted the baby. However, the officers involved in investigating this crime found that the address didn't even exist. There was also seemingly no such person as J.F. Barnes in the area. The parcel was also addressed to someone who didn't seem to exist. An autopsy concluded that the child was killed at just a few hours old. Horrifically, they had been strangled. Tragically, the mystery of the baby in the mail has still never been solved. Riker has been found hungry, thirsty and cold, but in good health after going missing for two days near his home in Montana. He was last seen playing with the family's dog. 
After disappearing, police received a concerned call from a neighbor and began searching. A code red was sent to all nearby residents as teams combed through a dense vegetation in the area. He was found on Pine Ridge Road, about to 0.5 miles from where he'd last been seen. I keep asking about what happened. Riker, do you remember when you got lost? What do you see? I see a house. A house? In the woods? Someone lived in the house? Yeah. I'm sorry that happened to you, bro. That was scary. You okay, Lil now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y'all, breaking news. So an arrest has finally been made in the case of the 16-year-old cheerleader that was found unalive in the bathtub last week. Now, this is the guy right here that they arrested. They arrested him this morning. Let's get into it. So the person that's been arrested is Rafael Govea Romero. And they arrested him in Schulenburg, Texas, after they charged him with capital murder. Now, this is the guy that was being searched for. This is the person of interest that was being searched for with the Volcom sweatshirt on and the tattoo behind his ear. Yeah, that was him. So they found him that fast, you guys. Uh, he was driving a uh, 2010 to 2018 Ford Taurus. And like I said, he was wearing a Volcom hooded sweatshirt. Now, I'm not sure exactly the connection to this guy with, with, with Lisbeth and the situation, you know, why, they, why he did what he did to her, allegedly. But I'm pretty sure those details will be released soon. But they did make an arrest, you guys. I'm just grateful and happy that she is finally going to be getting some justice. This is crazy that this, this, all this happened so fast. But I'm very happy that they got the guy. Now, police made a statement and said, although Romero is apprehended, we recognize Lisbeth's family and friends are grieving and will still need support from the community. Now, this, like I said, this is good because things are moving forward. And I'm just praying that Lisbeth can get some justice and her family. I'm sending them my condolences, my deepest condolences. But thank y'all for watching. Good day and sing this little song. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit. Run, run, run. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit. You know when you hear those 911 calls and the dispatcher says something that literally makes you wonder how they function in society? This is one of those calls times a thousand. Okay, let me take you back to August 24, 2019 when 47 year old Debbie Stevens was delivering papers in Fort Smith, Arkansas. So it had been raining really hard and Debbie's car gets swept away in a flash flood with Debbie in it. So she calls 911 for help. So the call goes to dispatcher Donna Raynew, and for a second, it looks like the stars have aligned because just months prior, Donna was named the 2019 Fire Chief Dispatcher of the Year, okay? So Debbie is in an all-out panic, afraid that she's going to drown, which she does ultimately drown. So her fear was very, very real and warranted. Donna, well, I'll let you listen to the 911 compilation that I put together, and you tell me what you think. That you're scared, but there's nothing I can do sitting in a chair. Am I not on the phone with you trying to get you some help? Yeah. Okay. Stop. You're not gonna die. I don't know why you're freaking out. It's okay. You're not doing nothing but losing your oxygen up in there. So calm down. But where are they gonna be here? As soon as they get there. This will, te this will teach you next time. Don't drive in the water. No. I don't see how you didn't see it. You had to go right over it. So yeah. even though you can't swim, I think you can still stand up in this. How tall are you? Only five foot tall. Okay. Well, you're not three foot, so you'll be just fine. A lot of people have called in on you, so you're going to get their self in danger because you put yourself in danger. You're going to have to shut up, okay? Oh Hold God. on for me. Hold on. Can you imagine if that was your mom, sister, friend, whatever, anybody that you cared about, and that's how they were treated in their last seconds of life? This was Debbie's car that they found her in an hour later, and she had, of course, drowned. Crazy. Oh, and the craziest part about this? Donna had turned in her two weeks notice 13 days ago. It was her last shift as an employee, a 911 dispatcher. Crazy. Mommy told me something a little girl should know. It's all 
about the devil. You were the adult. You can say that. I am saying that. I was by age. I was by age. And Let's by maturity. Ah, uh, you maybe. You were a teacher, Mary. You can't matter. say I was immature. But you don't know him. No, but I don't need to know him in this discussion. He's the child. Who was I'm the talking boss? about you. Who was the boss? Who was the boss? What? Who was the boss back then? You know, then? there was me pursuing you. Who was the boss back then? <laughs> this is ridiculous. No, this who is was? Ridiculous. Who was? Just say. Just say? Who was the boss? Well, I knew it was what I knew back then. But who was the boss? He was 13, Mary. But who was the boss? This is getting weird. Who was the boss? Who? I'm pursuing the relationship. Who was the boss? Well, I was the pursuer. Yes. Mary, even as you're but hearing this now, come on, he was 13. It doesn't matter. It absolutely matters. Oh, well, flaw me. <sighs> flaw me as, a, as an... Uh, as an adult? Um, yes, flaw me. I did the yeah. best I could. This 21-month-old baby went missing 51 years ago and has just been reunited with her family. In 1971, Melissa Highsmith was a baby. Her parents had just separated and her mum, Alta, was looking for someone to help with childcare so she could try and keep her job. She posted an advert in a local newspaper and got a reply from someone called Ruth Johnson. Ruth picked Melissa up from Atla's roommate one day when Atla was at work. The roommate reported that Ruth seemed to be nice and she was well dressed. She was wearing a bonnet and white gloves. However, tragically the woman never returned and this was the last time her mum would see Melissa for 51 years. The local community set out looking for baby Melissa but the police had little to go off. Atla had been absolutely desperate for childcare and with the threat of losing her job hadn't been able to visit Ruth at her address prior to agreeing to the childcare. Ruth and Atla had arranged to meet prior to the initial babysit, but Ruth failed to show up. With limited options, once Ruth got back in contact, Atla took her up on her offer. Melissa's case would go cold for half a century. In November 2022, there was a false sighting of Melissa. Despite the disappointment that this caused the family, it also spurred them on to start looking again. Melissa's dad submitted a home DNA test kit. The results that came back were shocking. The test was able to link Melissa's parents to grandchildren they didn't even know about. Melissa's dad was able to get hold of a marriage record and find Melissa on Facebook. Melissa was going by the name Melanie Walden. At first, Melanie was very skeptical when Jeffrey explained the situation. He managed to convince her that he was genuine by explaining to her the birthmark that he knew that she had on her back. Melanie agreed to a DNA test, which once and for all confirmed she was missing baby Melissa. She finally got reunited with her family and revealed she'd actually been raised in a town less than 20 minutes from where she was snatched. Now, no information has been released about the woman who raised Melissa, apart from the fact that she was abusive and caused Melissa to leave home when she was just 15. When Melissa confronted her about the news that she now knew, the woman that raised her admitted to knowing that she had been kidnapped. Melissa is now going by her birth name again and wants to have another wedding ceremony so that her dad can walk her down the aisle. This 10 year old kid murdered other children and she pretty much got away with it. This is the twisted story of serial killer Mary Bell. So Mary was born in 1956 in England and when she was a child, she displayed some disturbing behaviors. She was violent, she would lash out at her family, and they knew that there was just something wrong with her, but they didn't know exactly how far this temperament would take Mary. In 1968, a boy who had been playing with Mary Bell was pushed by her off of a roof. And later on that same evening, the parents of three small girls called the police and said that these girls had been playing with Mary Bell and that she had tried to strangle them while they were in a play pit. Now, Mary was interviewed by the police. Keep in mind, she was a child at the time as well. She claimed that she had nothing to do with this. The kids were lying, blah, blah, blah. And so the police let her off with a warning. They alerted local authorities, but they couldn't do anything. But that leads us to May 25th, 1968, the day before Mary Bell's 11th birthday. On that day, she lured a three-year-old boy named Martin Brown into an abandoned house and strangled him to death for no reason alone. She then left the boy's body in there and went on with her day. So the next day on Mary's birthday, she and her friend broke into a nursery and vandalized the place. And eventually, when the police checked the scene of the crime, they discovered some of these disturbing notes that Mary had left. This one read, I murder so that I may come back. 
And another one said, we did murder Martin Brown, F off. These notes were written by Mary Bell and left there. It was almost like she wanted to get caught or she wanted to toy with the parents. Then a couple months later in July of the same year, three-year-old Brian Howe went missing. And when they found Brian's body, they made some disturbing discoveries. There were puncture wounds covering the kid's legs. The letter M had been haphazardly carved into his stomach. Hair had been sliced off from his scalp and his privates had been mutilated. Eventually though, it was found that Brian died from strangulation. And when the coroner was looking at his corpse, they determined that the killer was probably another child. So eventually, after a large manhunt and an investigation by the police, authorities were led to Mary Bell, who was seen playing with Brian on the day of his death. I mean, there are a lot of details that go into the story. I can make a more detailed story time if you want, but eventually Mary confessed to killing Brian and also confessed to murdering three-year-old Martin just a few months prior. So after a nine-day trial, which there are some crazy details on that as well that we could cover, Mary Bell was cleared of the murder charges, but she was convicted of manslaughter charges. At the time, she was only 11 years and six months old, making her Britain's youngest convicted female killer. A statistic and a record that she still holds to this day. But Mary Bell only ended up serving about 12 years in prison for the murder of those two young boys. And she was released back into society in 1980 at the age of 23. She's still alive and nobody knows exactly where Mary Bell is today as she's been granted lifelong anonymity by British courts. She has her own child and like I said, she's not dead so nobody knows exactly where she is. So if you're watching this from England, your next door neighbor may have been a child killer. You never know. <laughs>